What's up guys, I'm Mike from The Lost Co. It might seem like this video has a rather clickbaity title, but we're not kidding. This is the most insane bike we've ever built. So let's check out Julian's custom Nikolai Geometron G1. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Nikolai is a German frame manufacturer, and it's actually quite tough to get their frames here in the United States. So our awesome customer Julian, who lives about an hour north in Vancouver, BC, drove down to the US here in Bellingham and dropped off his Geometron frame to us so that we could do a custom build for him. Here we go, we're gonna do a pit maneuver, ending this one as he's tried to swung that pit maneuver. Vehicle did a couple of little fishtail there, getting a little more aggressive now. Julian knew about 50% of the components that he wanted for his custom build, so we worked with him to figure out which components would be best to finish this thing off to best suit his riding style and the type of terrain he's trying to tackle. Before we look at the components, let's check out this super cool frame from Nikolai. This frame is super adjustable, so you can do a whole bunch of crazy stuff with this and really customize it to be exactly what you want. You can actually run this with either 29 inch wheels or 27.5. Julian decided to go with the old mullet style setup on this bike. He's got a 29 inch wheel up front, 27.5 in the back. The shock mount in the rocker link is adjustable and there is a high and low mount. Choose either 163 or 175 millimeters of travel. Julian opted to run this in 175 millimeters in the rear. This frame also has adjustable chain stays and seat stays, so you can make the rear end longer or shorter for how you want to ride it. With this frame's current setup, this bike is sitting at a very, very slack 61.5 degree head tube angle. Yeah. That's super slack. This thing is going to be crazy going downhill. Also, the welds on this are really, really crazy. It's really, really flush. The welds look like they are never going to break. And I think that Julian was looking for a frame that's gonna last him pretty much forever. And I think he got that frame. This thing is sick. Just having this in front of you, it's an amazing frame to look at. The craftsmanship and quality of the welds and the materials is really, really impressive. And it's just an overall bike just to look at, let alone ride. The rear suspension is handled by an EXT Storia V3 rear shock. These things are made in Italy. I have not ridden one, but I've heard amazing things, so I'm sure he's going to be freaking stoked on this thing. Up front, we've got a Marzocchi Bomber Z1, and that is set at 170 millimeters. Julian is a Shimano guy, so he went with an SLX drivetrain and XT cranks, and to stop this thing, he's got four piston XT brakes with 203 millimeter rotors front and rear. For tires, Julian chose to run the Maxxis Asagai on both the front and on the rear. He's got these things in the Max Grip Double Down Compound. That Max Grip rubber combined with the four piston XT brakes is gonna have him stopping on a dime. Or stopping on a quarter? Does that mean more power than stopping on a dime? I don't know, I'll have to look into that, but that's a different video. Both tires are set up tubeless, and Julian went with our recommendation of having a cush core installed in the rear tire to not only have a little bit of rim protection, but most importantly, more grip since he can run a lower pressure in the back. One part of this build that Julian wasn't 100% sure about was what kind of wheels he wanted to be rolling on. He did know that he wanted to try the Shimano XT hubs, but he wasn't sure which rim and spokes to build up the wheel with. But luckily, we specialize in custom wheel builds. So Russ and Jason worked hand in hand with Julian to figure out how he wanted his wheels to feel, and also, of course, what kind of terrain he's gonna be riding his bike on mostly. What we landed on is what we think is the perfect rim and spoke combo for his style of riding. We went with the DT Swiss XM481 rims. This is our shop favorite aluminum rim and what we do most of our custom wheel builds with on all mountain slash enduro bikes. The 481 is a super tough aluminum rim and it's actually pretty dang light for an aluminum rim. What we did is we mated these to some double butted 2.0 to 1.8 spokes. What that does is gonna give that wheel a little bit of flex a little bit of liveliness and pop rather than a straight gauge spoke, which is just gonna make the bike ride really stiff and kind of ride like a brick. But we didn't want that. We wanted to build this wheel set for some fun all mountain enduro and light downhill riding. So with this spoke, rim, and hub setup, this bike is gonna ride pretty poppy, lively. It's gonna be a lot of fun. For the cockpit, Julian wanted some parts that weren't only cool, but also comfortable to ride. 
So for the cool part, we've got this Cascade Racing Designs Vagrant Stem in the raw aluminum finish. It matches the raw Nikolai aluminum frame perfectly, so that is sweet. And for the comfort part, we went with the Race Face Turbine R aluminum handlebars. For an aluminum bar, the Turbine Rs are a comfortable bar to ride. They've got a little bit of flex built into them. They're not way too stiff, leaving your hands numb at the bottom of the mountain. So we recommended those to Julian. He liked that idea. We stuck those on the bike. And to grab those bars, we've got my personal favorite grip, the ODI Elite Pros. These things are super comfy. They fill the little center of your hand. And uh, that was another recommendation that we personally gave him. I think he's gonna like it. Julian wasn't 100% sure which fork to put on the front of this bike and keep it right and smooth. We recommended the Marzocchi Bomber Z1. This is, in our opinion, the best bang for your buck fork when it comes to aggressive riding. It's got 36 millimeter stanchions, just like the Fox 36. Fox actually owns Marzocchi. So it's a very similar fork to a Fox Factory 36, although the crown and the lowers are a little bit thicker and beefier to make this fork just overall burlier and a little bit more stiff than a Fox 36. Also, it's got a much more basic grip damper in it compared to the Fox's Grip 2 damper. Overall, it's less adjustable, but feels actually very similar to the Grip 2 damper in terms of performance and on-trail feel. So overall, with the less machining and refinements to the chassis and the more basic damper compared to a Fox 36, overall, you get a little bit more budget-friendly fork to start with an awesome foundation. Julian really liked this idea because he wanted to keep the price of the total build down a few hundred bucks, but also have the option to upgrade the damper in the future. So let's just say in a couple months, Julian decides that he wants a little bit more tunability and performance out of his Z1. We could drop in the amazing Fox Grip 2 damper in this bad boy, and overall what he'll end up having is a stiffer and slightly cheaper Fox Factory 36 minus the Kashima coating. Julian decided to go with the one-up components V2 dropper post. This thing has a massive 210 millimeters of drop to seriously get his booty out of the way of that saddle. And the saddle, by the way, is our shop favorite, Chromag Lynx DT. Julian also needed a recommendation for a great headset for this custom build, so we went with the shop favorite Cane Creek Hellbender. The bearings in the Hellbender are much more sealed and weatherproofed compared to the bearings in the Cane Creek 40 series. The 40 series headset isn't bad, but the Hellbender is just a better option for the type of weather that both Julian and we are going to be riding in out here in the Pacific Northwest. All right, now you're probably sitting at home thinking, dude, why are you talking about the headset still? I came here to see cool valve caps and custom color decals. But seriously, this is just another perk of doing your custom builds with us here at the Lost Co. We don't sell stuff just to sell stuff. We are in it to win it. We want to make sure that we're actually building a custom bike for the customer. We're going to set aside some time with you to really figure out which bike and components are going to be best for you. We're going to ask some questions like, what's your riding style? What kind of terrain are you riding on? Are you looking to travel somewhere specific? Are you looking for the bike to handle that specific terrain? What is the weather like in your area? Can you service things at home or do you just send them in to get service? How long are you going to have the bike? It's all those questions that custom tailor a custom bike for you. It's a custom bike. It should be custom tailored for you. Thank you so much for joining me in this video and checking out this insane custom bike that we just built up. Now, if you are looking to do a custom build with us, you can either choose from the selection of frames that we sell here at the shop, or you can send us whatever sweet frame you've got your heart set on. To get the ball rolling on your custom bike build, simply go to our website at thelostco.com, select that custom builds tab at the top, select custom bike builds, then scroll down to our custom bike build form, fill that out so we can get to know you, send it in, and we'll get right back to you. We'll work hand in hand with you to build up the custom bike of your dreams with the components that are best suited for you and your riding style. If you've got questions for your custom bike build, we've got answers. Give us a call at the shop, 360-306-8827, or shoot us an email to info at Until next time, happy trails.